Live from this news center of the Sultan of Oman Television, here we present to you tonight's news bulletin. First, the headline. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos greets his brother, the King of Bahrain, on the occasion of his country's 40th National Day. Oman Electricity Transmission Company signs a partial allocation agreement to invest its 49% shares to a Chinese company. The state's general budget records a decline in deficit by 59% during the first quarter of 2019. And experts and researchers review the final draft of the National Strategy of Scientific Research and Development 2040 before its approval. Good evening once again and thank you for joining us. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qabu sends a couple of greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa of Bahrain on his country's 48th National Day. And His Majesty the Sultan sends a couple of greetings to His Excellency President Qasim Jomart of Kazakhstan on his country's National Day. Nama Holding Group has signed a partial allocation agreement with the Chinese State Grid International Development Corporation to invest 49% from Oman Electricity Transmission Company's share. The signing ceremony was held under the auspices of His Excellency Darwish bin Ismail al Belushi, Minister Responsible for Financial Affairs. More details in the following report by our colleague Saleh bin Khalfan al Rahbi. 49% stake of Oman Electricity Transmission Company was transferred by NAMA Group to the State Grid International Development of China under a partial allocation agreement signed by the two sides in Muscat. The transfer came within the framework of the privatization program launched by NAMA Group in 2017 for four companies in the field of electricity distribution and supply. Celebrating today is the signing ceremony of the privatization, partial privatization of the trans transmission company in Oman. Uh, as it has been يعني, said in the speeches that 49% uh, will be privatized to state uh, grid from China. For the other five com four, four companies in the power sector, the percentage we are looking for is about 70 uh, percent. The privatization program seeks to attract foreign direct investment to the country, enhance the participation of the private sector in building the elements of the national economy, and bring the best techniques and technical and administrative expertise which will lead to developing human resources, improving customer satisfaction, ensuring the best use of energy resources, and reducing the cost per provided electricity unit over time. 16 investors competed for the partial allocation of the Oman Electricity Transmission Company and was won by the Chinese company, which is one of the biggest international companies in the field of electricity transmission. The allocation procedures are expected to be completed early next year after the conditional approval of the Authority for Electricity Regulation. Salah Bukhalfan al Rahbi, Sultanate of Oman Television, Muscat. Thank you. Thank you, Saleh. The data issued by the National Center for Statistics and Information suggested a decline in deficit of the state general budget in the first quarter of this year. The data, which came in the report analyzing the economic situation in the Sultanate, suggested an overall increase in the revenues and public expenditure. According to the information issued by the National Center for Statistics and Information, the Omani government uh, was able to reduce the deficit in the state general budget by 59% during the first quarter of 2019. The report showed that the deficit value in the Sultanate during the first quarter of 2019 reached 309 million Omani rials, compared to over 750 million Omani rials during the same period of 2018. Uh, it is as well showed an increase in the total value of revenues by 32%, recording around 2.7 billion Omani rials by the end of the first quarter of 2019. It is as well showed an increase in the expenditure by 2.6% and reached 6 billion Omani rials. 
With regards to oil and non-oil activities, the report showed a decline in the value added of these activities. The report showed that the value added of the natural gas increased by 11%. Agriculture and fisheries wealth sector recorded an increase in its value added by 18%. The Ministry of Interior announced that the enrolling of applications for the municipal council elections is opened from today. The ministry urged those citizens who did not activate the election record to submit their application through the election website. The Research Council TRC organized the National Symposium for the National Strategy for Research and Development NSRD 2040 today at Oman Convention and Exhibition Center. NSRD 2040, which is conducted with a participatory approach and, and led by TRC teams in collaborations with the government, uh, private and academic institutions aimed to prepare an integrated national strategy for research and development that is informed by the global experience and is responsive to local needs, align research priorities with Oman Vision 2040 and other national strategies. International experts from the former International Advisory Board of uh, TRC and an international experts from the Senate of Pakistan delivered their insight in the symposium. The opening ceremony of the seminar was held under the auspices of Her Excellency Dr. Rawia bin Saud al Busaidiya, Minister of Higher Education. You're watching the Sultanate of Oman television and yet to come in our news bulletin. The competition for the Royal Oman Police Infantry 2019 is concluded. Welcome back to the news from the South and of Oman Television. Oman hosted the WHO Global Meeting on Non-Communicable Diseases last week, sharing with ministers and experts from around the world. Over 600 delegates from some 100 countries participated in the four-day meeting in and around Muscat. More details in the following report. With the aim to accelerate the implementation of national responses to address NCDs and mental health conditions, with a view to reduce premature mortality from non-communicable diseases NCDs by one-third and scale up interventions to reach SDG target 3.4 by 2030 by catalyzing action through partnerships and capacity building, a four-day WHO global meeting on non-communicable diseases and mental health organized by the WHO with the support from the Minister of Health and the Gulf Health was held in Muscat. The event uh, gathered uh, representatives from over 100 member states of the World Health Organization across the globe uh, from public health and other sectors. I'm so glad to be here in this uh, meeting hosted by the Sultanate of Oman. In fact, I'm, I'm impressed with the country, with the work that um, uh, Sultan is doing particularly on NCD. You are, you had the opportunity today to visit the health centers facility, the Premier Health. I'm so impressed with the level of organization in this country. I think it is very important for us to accelerate progress because when you look at it, NCDs do not wait for anybody and they are silent. And therefore we ourselves have to uh, look at what we can do fast enough before what we normally say the cost of inaction overtakes us. So this is a very important meeting and I think program managers from around the world, from member states, have been equipped with quite some motivation and knowledge that they can use to have the right kind of passion, to pursue the right kind of skills and do the right kind of strategic plannings and implementations. Thank you very much for all the speakers and WHO for uh, organize and Oman, Oman of course for organizing such, uh, such uh, interesting and informative um, meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, in terms of Oman, I just uh, can say that it, uh, I'm amazed 
uh, by the natural beauty and the people of Oman. I had a chance to present my fellow youth and explain how the youth are affected by NCD and what the youth can do to improve the health of other young populations across the world. I am here representing Latin American civil society and a coalition of more than 300 organizations from Latin America that are all engaged in prevention and control of NCDs, chronic diseases. I am very thankful to the government of Oman for having hosted this meeting and of course to the World Health Organization. It was my pleasure to have an invitation from WHO EMRO to, to participate at this a big event for the global NCD meeting and was this time hosted by in Sultanate Oman. Thanks for Sultanate Oman and thanks for WHO. So it was great to be here in Oman, uh, Oman being one of the key countries with successes in NCD's uh, prevention and treatment and control, but also to be a part of the World Heart Federation as president of the African Heart Network. I think there's a lot of learnings that we will take back to our countries. I'm the head of the mental health unit at the Palestinian Minister of Health. And this conference has been very uh, precious, a precious opportunity to participate in this conference because uh, it's a big gathering for important professionals from all over the world who meet together and put their efforts together to act uh, to reduce uh, non-communicable diseases and the burden of mental health problems on the, the, the people of the world, on their population's uh, uh, community and well-being. Uh, we've been treated very kindly and generously in this country. We are thankful for the people of Oman, for the government of Oman, and for all the professionals that we get to know here. Throughout its four days, a series of exciting and interactive plenary and panel discussions were conducted, while numerous new initiatives to prevent and control NCDs were launched. Now, to learn more on that, uh, we have with us uh, tonight uh, the WHO representative to Oman, Dr. Akjimal Maktimova. Uh, Dr. Akjimal, uh, good evening uh, to you and welcome good to evening. the studio here. Uh, Dr. Akjimal, uh, can you please uh, highlight to us uh, about the importance it has, this particular meeting here in the Sultanate of Oman? Indeed, uh, last week, entire world was focused on Oman as WHO convened this global meeting bringing together representatives from over 100 member states, from over 40 non-state actors, and I'm talking about alliances and associations from food and beverage, pharma, medical associations, 20 young leaders across the six regions of WHO uh, to actually address uh, the major killer of the 21st century, to leverage on our efforts. Um, we have our loved ones who suffer from diabetes, hypertension, uh, stroke, um, cancer. And these diseases are taking 41 million people. And 15 million are dying before they reach age 70. And um, um, WHO has technical packages, guidelines. And if those guidelines and packages are implemented, uh, we can save until 2030 350 billion in economic growth. Oman has not been chosen um, by coincidence uh, because um, Oman together, among 194 actually member states, Oman has been chosen as a venue, not only because of its hospitality and beautiful backdrop, mm -hmm. but because of efforts and the great and measurable achievements it made. Um, to name a few, we are talking about taxation of uh, tobacco, uh, sugar, uh, sweetened beverages. Mm -hmm. Um, we talk about reduced salt, which are known risk factors for non-communicable diseases. Um, I would like also to mention, in fact, that um, those representative participants of the meeting um, were hosted um, and visiting uh, medical facilities, mm -hmm. health facilities of Oman mm -hmm. on day four to see how it works on the ground and how it works in practice. Right, talking about 40 million annually, that is really too much. And all the causes, as you said, 
uh, the risk factors of uh, using uh, salt, uh, sugars, and uh, uh, not being active. This is what you've talked about. But when we talk about uh, NCDs, uh, does that mean non-communicable disease? You're talking about uh, a cardiac uh, condition, um, uh, cardiovascular diseases. You talk about diabetes. You talk about uh, mental health and uh, many others. And not only the uh, uh, someone not to be, uh, what you call, active, uh, but uh, about, uh, can you tell us more about it? Right. Um, I would say with confidence that uh, risk factors, accumulated risk factors, are causing non-communicable diseases in addition to uh, biological factors. Mm -hmm. And those risk factors are, we need to be aware of. And as one of the participants uh, actually and the Secretary for Planning Affairs of the Ministry of Health put it, um, education. Awareness, awareness and education are the most important factor. I would like to name those risk factors. These are um, lack of physical activity, um, use of tobacco, um, high intake of salt, sugar and fat. Um, we should be aware of it and if uh, um, we should be aware of the way how we live in this fast paced, fast speed and fast food world. We have to make our healthy choices. And if I have to choose one area to plea to the audience, mm -hmm. I would like to speak about our children and our adolescents. We had World um, Obesity Federation Conference recently hosted in Oman. Mm -hmm. And I would like to note that our children, obesity and overweight in our children in the Eastern Mediterranean region is above global average of 7%. Our adolescents in the 22 countries, and Oman is not an exception, mm -hmm. are least active in the world. And they, basically our region is topping up uh, adolescents um, in inactivity. Mm -hmm. What it means that we have to protect and prevent um, non-communicable diseases in our children so they can lead a healthier life, lives, productive lives, and live in wealthier countries where we don't need to spend money for treatment. Indeed, so people need really to be active on that. Uh, now, uh, what we know that also um, Oman, uh, in particular Muscat and some other cities become uh, a health city. Can, uh, what can you tell right. us about that? I am very proud and actually very thankful for the governor of uh, Muscat uh, for agreeing to be part of Healthy Cities Partnership. Mm -hmm. It is a partnership uh, earlier this year in January we have celebrated SUR being um, acknowledged as Healthy City within the regional network mm -hmm. and this network is a global network, prestigious network for cities which committed for healthy environments. And when we, I met um, last uh, week with the governor of Muscat and we looked through 14 interventions, mm -hmm. actually I have to acknowledge that almost all of those interventions have already been in place in the case of Oman, in the case of Muscat. Mm -hmm. But maybe what we could feel we could do more was about actually physical activity mm -hmm. to create more environments, better environments where we can bike, cycle, run, move, um, and actually increase and encourage uh, everyone to be able to move and uh, lead healthier lives. I would like to use this opportunity to um, actually thank the government of Oman, to send profound thanks on behalf of the WHO to the government of Oman, to all the partners and um, who have supported and organizers who have supported this mission. And I would like to assure you that at least 500 more people across the globe fall in love with Muscat, beautiful city of Muscat, beautiful Oman, hospitality of Omani people, and they are going to carry this love and the knowledge and the enthusiasm and energy which they have gathered in this meeting back to corners, or different corners of the globe uh, to actually sustain efforts to beat NCDs, non-communicable diseases, and uh, save lives of many more people. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akjimal, uh, for this uh, uh, information, which are very important. That means that each and everyone, and as you stated that here in this part of the world, people are not that active. We need to be active. Each and everyone needs to be active. From me, you and all youth there, please get up and make a movement. So thank you very much for your time, and we do appreciate uh, being with us here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.
That was uh, Dr. Akjibal, WHO representative to Oman, briefing us on WHO meeting held in the Sultanate of Oman. The, the Civil Service Council held its fourth meeting this year. The Council discussed a number of aspects related to job requirements stated in civil service law and executive regulations that ensure the good working process at governmental uh, bodies. It also reviewed requests of secondments of staff and other job affairs in accordance with the provisions uh, regulating this under the civil service law and its executive regulations. The meeting was chaired by His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Omar Al Marhun, Minister of Civil Service, uh, Deputy Chairman of the Civil Service Council. His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Omar Al Marhun, Minister of Civil Service, Head of the Board of Directors of Institute of Public Administrations, received His Excellency Dr. Nasser Al Hatlan Al Qahtani, Director General of the Arab Administrative Development organization. The visit comes uh, within the framework of the Arab Conference on Public Administration Governance uh, entitled the, the Way to Achieve Sustainable Development Goals in the Arab World, which is organized by the Institute of Public Administration in cooperation with the Arab Administrative Development Organization and Oman Center for Governance and Sustainability during the period from 16th to 18th of December. The 47th Conference of the Federation of Arab News Agencies affirmed on the importance of credibility acquainting Arab people with the course of events and developments in the Arab, regional and international levels. The conference also dwelt on the importance of establishing a platform in the Arab news agencies in order to ensure of miles of misleading news. The conference discussed the challenges facing news agencies, especially those related to the fake news. The conference highlighted on the heavy responsibility of Arab news agencies in advocating peace and promoting dialogue among world countries. The activities of the conference were presided over by His Excellency Dr. Abdul Mun'im bin Mansour al Hassani, Minister of Information. The conference, the activities of the conference looks like the public authority for privatization and partnership organized a workshop entitled the use of offsets programs worldwide in developing the defense industry it shed light on the role of such programs in the industrial and technical aspects related to the military sector it also included discussion sessions to acquaint the participants with the ways of benefiting from offsets programs to create projects and new innovative business that will contribute in the national economy. The workshop also focused on international developments in the military field through the offsets programs. The Central Bank of Oman, CBO, announced that public subscriptions for government's development bonds worth 201 rials through auction started today. The subscriptions uh, for these bonds uh, will be for a period of 10 years and with an interest rate of 5.75% annually. CBO added that the subscriptions will be closed on the 23rd of December 2019. The binding will be held on Tuesday, 24th of December. The Ministry of Commerce and Industry signed a contract of administration and operation, the outlet affiliate to the Sultanate Pavilion in Dubai Expo 2020. The contract signing came to give opportunities to youth and small and medium-sized enterprises to participate in the Expo at all levels of preparations. The opportunity will be provided for the Omani SMEs and entrepreneurs to benefit from business chances that will be available directly and indirectly through the participation of the Sultanate in the exhibition. Oman Ground uh, Handling Company signed nine agreements to provide ground services with a number of domestic and international airlines that operate their flights to and from the Sultanate airports. The agreements aim to provide a comprehensive set of ground services of the highest quality in line with the standards of service provided, which in turn will provide more travel opportunities and options for travelers on board domestic and international air carriers. The company sought uh, through the signing of these agreements to develop partnership relations and enhance 
cooperation and investments in the fields of aviation services in the Sultanate. After five consecutive days of strong competitiveness, the competition of Royal Oman Police for Infantry 2019 was concluded. 35 teams participated in the competition, which was held in Sultan Qaboos Academy for Police Sciences in the Governorate of Adakhiliya. The concluding event started by the arrival of the Major General Suleiman bin Mohammed Al Harthi, Assistant Inspector General of Police and Customs for Administrative and Financial Affairs, in addition to listening to a briefing about the context. After that, the teams performed an infantry show and military acts through which they proved their efficiency and excellence. The weather analysis of National Multi-Hazard Early Warning Center indicates that the trough of low pressure will affect the Sultanate from 15th of December 2019. According to the latest weather charts, partly cloudy to cloudy skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of rain occasionally thunder showers over the governorate of Msandam and North Al-Batina from today evening, extending gradually from tomorrow morning to the governorate of Buremi, Al-Zahira, South Al-Batina, Dakhli and Masqat. Seas will be moderate to rough along the coast of the governorate of Musandam and the Sea of Oman with a maximum wave height of 2.5 meters. The Public Authority for Civil Aviation advises all to take precautions during rain and not to cross flowing wadis and avoid venturing out to sea. Oman College of Health Sciences uh, in Adakhliya branch uh, celebrated today the graduation of the 2019 nursing batch. The ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Sheikh uh, Dr. Khalifa bin Hamid al Saadi, Governor of Adakhliya. Our reporter Saleh bin Khalfan al Rahbi has more details in the following report. A journey full of dedication and perseverance. Five years of studying will remain memorable for the second batch of graduates from Oman College of Health Sciences at Dakhiliya branch. It's such a pleasure to be here today, finishing five years of studying nursing. Uh, I feel very much happy for finishing five years. It, it wasn't easy to finish it. I want to thank my parents and the teachers that uh, I learned a lot of uh, things from them and all people who support me all uh, during those years. Today, really, I am happy uh, for this celebration. Uh, I would uh, like to thank my uh, parents, uh, family, uh, and uh, all teachers, because they are who are supporting me uh, for this uh, uh, five uh, years. 31 male and female graduates completed the requirements of the Bachelor of General Nursing program for the academic year 2018-2019. It's a great day for us. We are so pleasured to achieve our goal today. And uh, I cannot say it's, it was easy because we faced many difficulties, but the great things that we achieved it today. I have to thank my families, my teachers, and all who are helping and forcing me to be here today. Today is our graduation day, and we are very happy for this. And uh, I want to thank uh, my parents and all who support me and in the future inshallah I plan to continue my study. It's a big day for us and it's a big achievement for us as we are uh, uh, studied uh, through these five years we are uh, working hard we are studied and we and today we are uh, graduated today so 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 it's a big uh, achievement for us uh, thank you for all hopefully that uh, we, we will continue our study and we will be able to provide the proper health care for our patient in the following uh, period staff nurses are the backbone of health institutions hence the ministry of health attaches a special attention to investing in the national human resources in general and the nursing staff in particular. From this moment onwards, the graduates will begin a new journey to ensure the well-being of patients and contribute in the development of healthcare services in the country. Saleh Mokhalfan al-Rahbi, Wilaya of Nizwa, Al-Dakhiliya, Governorate. This is the Sultan of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Majesty Sultan Qaboos greets his brother, the King of Bahrain, on the occasion of his country's 48th National Day. The Oman Electricity Transmission Company signs a partial allocation agreement to invest its 49% shares to a Chinese company. 
The state's general budget records a decline in deficit by 59% during the first quarter of 2019. And experts and researchers review the final draft of the National Strategy of Scientific Research and Development 2040 before its approval. And with that, we do conclude this news uh, uh, this evening uh, from all of us here in the studio and the newsroom. We thank you for joining us. Wish you a pleasant evening and good night.